You've tuned into I Work For Him, the voice of collaboration for the faith and work movement. We are your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg, and our mission is to transform the workplace of every Christian into a mission field. What does that look like in your workplace? Let's find out right now. As a Jesus follower who is on mission in our workplace mission field, we must prepare ourselves daily for our work. We can't just rush around all morning long, hop in the car, or run down the hallway without being ready for the place God is sending us today. We can't just jump into the driver's seat of our work truck, walk the parking lot of our car dealership, sit in the maintenance shack of our lumber yard, sit in the cabbie of of our heavy equipment, or sit in the driver's seat of our taxi cab without preparing our hearts properly. Whatever your work is, we can't just rush in and get started. We need to be ready. We need to prepare ourselves. What do you do to prepare yourself to bring Jesus in you to meet others who need to meet Jesus in you on a daily basis? Steve McLean is here today, sharing how God has led him to help you prepare daily for your work. Martha and I might have another few few thoughts to add on at the end, but we're super grateful that Steve McLean is here with us today. Steve, welcome to I Work For Him. Oh, it's an honor to be here. Absolutely. Steve, were you always ready to live out your faith at work? Uh, honestly, no. Um, I don't think I really realized that was part of the job. You know, when I you first go to work, you know, even though you're gr- you grow up Christian, you really don't you don't think of it. At least I didn't think of it as a mission field. But then, as I got more and more mature in my faith, faith it did do that. It did kind of dawn on me. Okay, these guys that I work with, they are my neighbors, and um, and I'm supposed to be the light of Christ to them. But then, then the second obstacle kind of came in where you're. You're thinking, okay, how do I do that? How do I do that without offending people or getting in trouble? And uh, so, you know, and it's kind of awkward. <laughs> so it, it, it's it been in my heart for many, many years. Um, and I used to do it in some ways that we don't have time to go into, but they're kind of, it didn't work very well. Um, but as I, as I matured in my faith, I was able to uh, get a little better at it. Mm-hmm. And finding out that, you know, it's, it's not as hard if you keep a mindset of that, you know, that, that workplace, you're not there by mistake. So do you have any way that you can pinpoint what actually helped you to look at that differently? What helped you to have a paradigm shift about your workplace mission field? Um, it, it, it was slow at first. Like I said, it was as I matured. But I'll tell you what really keyed me was I bought a business. I was an engineer by, uh, by education. I was working in the engineering field. And I went to the dark side and, and bought a business. And this business had a meeting called FCCI. It was a bunch of, it was like eight, maybe seven, eight businessmen that all sat around the table every week. And they talked about how they made their business a platform. Some of them didn't own businesses. They were just high up managers. But they said, that, that's their platform for ministry. And they invited me to this meeting just to sit in. And I'll tell you, that was like scales falling off my eyes. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow. You know, this is, this is an absolute integration of who I am on Sunday to Monday. And so what did guys- that... What did that look like then in your new business as you had the scales fall off of your eyes and you probably started to implement some maybe biblical principles in your work? I'm not exactly sure, but what did it look like and how did that change this bit, very business that you bought? Well, it, 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 it gave me a platform. It, it said, okay, I have a platform. Now, I had a platform in the engineering world. I wish I would have used it better, but I wasn't. And that's part of why his word of work is out there. It's not just for business owners. It's for anybody that goes to work because we do have a, a platform no matter where we are. But what it did for that business is I realized that, wow, you know, there are, there's a lot of latitude to really be able to integrate. And, and these people that show up every day that are looking at me as an authority figure and listen to me when I speak that these, a lot of people would never darken the door of a church. And here they are every day with me. So I thought, wow, I got a mission. <laughs> and uh, and it, it just, it was with perfect clarity that 
FCCI brought that to my attention. So you recently, quote unquote, retired. And that could be a whole nother conversation for a whole nother world and another, another show, really. I retire for him. Maybe that'd be a good one. But yet every day you're spending a couple of hours every day writing a daily devotional, which is shared online at hiswordatwork.org, hiswordatwork.org. Why did you start doing this? Well, first of all, I'm not retired. I sold a business. Now I bought another business and that's why I'm here. And it's definitely not retirement. But <laughs> to answer your question, the reason I did it is because I believe that there are, I'll bet you 80, 90% of the people we sit next to in pews on Sunday don't know how or don't even see the mission that they have every day, Monday through Friday with the people that God placed right next to them. They just don't realize it. They, don't, they think that's work. We have this um, unconscious barrier between our secular and our sacred. And his word at work is meant to break through that, to, to give credit. Wow, you know, they listen to this and they think, you know, I could do that. And yeah, I am the light in my workplace. And they, and they think of people that claim to be atheists and they claim to see people that are struggling or they 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 realize they sit right next to somebody that's struggling and and they can be that light and his word at work is hopefully a devotional that allows them to really see that wow my my sunday and monday are not that far apart and mm. it should you know i know th- I know that when you teach things and you write things and you share them with other people, we often learn as we're going through that process, Steve. So for you, how has it impacted yourself as you um, have been shifting gears from one business to another um, as you prepare and present the His Word at Work? Well, I can tell you in all honesty, you know, and I think this is with any any Bible teacher or anything, I, a lot of those are my own struggle. The, they represent things that, man, I, I need to, I need to remember. I'm task oriented. So I go to work and I'm like all about my checklist and I can zoom right by people. So I have to have this, uh, this mindset when I get up in the morning that, okay, I'm going on mission and, and all the business stuff I'm going to do today is probably going to be forgotten, you know, it, probably for, forgotten next week, let alone next year. But there's eternal things that God is going to be asking me to do. And and having that eternal perspective going in, you start the Bible studies, you stop and you talk to people about, you know, whatever it is that's going on. You, you, you look at people and you try to see them not as employees or, or a vendor or a customer, but these are divine appointments. And that they're, they're in your life on purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, there's not a grain of sand that slips through God's fingers, right? We are right where we're supposed to be. And, uh, and having, that, having that mindset, and I'll tell you, his word at work puts me in that mindset to go be the person I'm called to be. And I thought, you know what? If the Lord is working on me like this, why not share it? Why not get it out there to the rest of the you know millions of people that are Christians that are going to work and uh, and and just give them a little bit of encouragement, and maybe some practical advice. Mm. I I love that, and I, I apologize. I thought you had retired. I didn't know you went off and you had a little bit of break and you bought another business. I so- I bought it by mistake. I, it's a long story, but here I am with my son. So <laughs> we'll cover that some other time. That's probably yeah. That's probably another show. But speaking of other shows, you know, Martha, I co-host. I retire for him right. with my buddy Bruce Bryan's, and we talk about that every day retiree. But but Steve, they got the same issue. They're trying to realize how do they take their daily retirement and make it matter for God? Because when if you're not dead, God's not done with you yet. I always like to say, if you're not dead, God's not done. So, and your calling doesn't retire when you do. And so, so many people have a misperception about that. So, on a, on a bi-weekly basis, we release the I Retire For Him podcast. And you can go out to iWorkForHim.com and just click on the I Retire For Him logo and got a cop and check out that podcast. 
or uh, subscribe to it on any of your favorite podcast platforms. But we all, we'll put in the show notes how you can listen to I Retire for him. In case you do retire, just know God's not done with you yet till you're breathing your last breath. Yep, that's the truth. Thanks for sharing that, Jim. So, Steve, one of the the thing it's one thing to write daily devotionals and put them out there on the web, but it's another thing to know that they're impacting other lives. And today, you invited a few of your friends who read the daily devotional to share how they're being impacted each and every day. And so, we have Josh and Mike that are both joining us. Um, for this section of the show. And um, I want to welcome both of them to the show as they're getting their cameras on and joining us so we can just continue this conversation because there's nothing better than getting the feedback from the people that are actually ingesting and allowing God to work in their lives. So Josh and Michael, thank you both so much for joining us. So Mike, what I love about this fact, and, and those of you guys watching on video, just understand, now, I just learned right before the show that Mike is actually Steve's mentor, and Steve is actually Josh's mentor. And so you're looking at a generational mentoring, which is what everybody needs, a Paul, a Barnabas, and a Timothy in their life. And this is a great example of it. Thanks for living that out, gentlemen. Yes. Because we need to be pouring into ourselves, into the inter- intergenerationally. So I love it. So, Mike, are you retired or are you still working? I'm still working. I'm in the commercial real estate business. And um, like Steve, I I think that um, this platform has been God ordained for me to be able to use the connections I make in my work to be a light and salt and, uh, you know, have the opportunity to share the gospel. Uh, I like what Paul said, you know, about how the fact that each of us are living letters known and read of all men. And I think that that's uh, sometimes mean we we need to be, um, you know, like, uh, I can't remember who wrote it, but, you know, uh, preach the gospel all the time. And if necessary, use words. Well, sometimes, you know, you get questions. Why are you this way? And and so, yeah, I think that's one of the reasons I don't feel like retirement's in the scriptures. And I, I just, I, I like the platform because it gives me an opportunity to still be active, proactive in the gospel every day. Well, I, I love that. So. It's helping you to be proactive. You want me to go back and forth? Okay. So Josh, tell us a little bit about your work and maybe you can also tell us how you found out about his way at work, his his word at work. So um, I am working at Kennedy Space Center currently. I've been there for about five weeks. It's five weeks this week. So I'm very new to my new position. So um, right now that is just um his word of work is doing awesome because it really gets you in the mindset of getting into the workplace and having god really know what your mission field is and you know steve has been my mentor for a while and when he started telling me about these devotionals and he signed me up for it automatically so i have i listen to him every day needed at least one person signed up yeah or or he'll just um or I'll, I'll let them stack up and then listen to them consecutively. But I'll really save the ones that really are impactful to me. And usually, like, so Steve is awesome because, uh, you know, he has the real world experience because I'm living in that every day. And there's a battlefield every day with the negativity. And there's no, like, just God isn't really, especially in space, like, people forget who, who the creator is. You know? shockingly and they just can't fathom like all this stuff was made by god so when you bring it back into the reality of things of really the mission field is is great yeah it's hard to believe that anybody can look out in space and and now that we've got telescopes when you weren't you know when we were kids nobody knew what those stars look like today we know what stars look like four billion light years from now and you're like the complexity of the universe and the dark space they're all trying to figure out what's this dark space holding everything together huh maybe the hand of god I love the fact that you guys have both highlighted his word at work in a couple of different fashions. And again, listeners, if you want to get signed up for this, I get this devotion every day, hiswordatwork.org. It comes in written form. And as Josh just hinted at, it comes in video form. You can listen to Steve read that daily devotional. So in case you're, you know, you're shaving, you're getting dressed and you want to listen to it, or maybe you're driving in your car and you want to listen to it, it, you can get it either way. And that's just super, super powerful. So, uh, Mike, I love the fact that you're 
in commercial real estate, you're still pounding it every day. How does getting these daily devotionals and your interaction with Steve, because you got a guy that's younger than you, that you're pouring into each other, because that's what mentoring is all about, is pouring into each other. How does it prepare you for those unexpected conversations you have during the day when you're dealing with clients or prospective clients? Well, I think, you know, uh, wonderfully that Steve has a variety every day. It's some different topic every day that he's giving you to think about. And I think when we really learn how to daily walk in the Spirit and be led by the Holy Spirit, your sensitivity levels up so that you are looking for those opportunities, you know, not only because people might ask you, but uh, you might just feel prompted by him to say something that you wouldn't normally say. And I do this often with clients. I'm just, you know, wondering, you know, or, or if it's not a client, it's somebody that's actually looking at a property that my client has me showing for lease or for sale. And uh, I think the, his word at work is so good because it gives you verses of scripture. Uh, and, and as Steve can tell you, I've kind of been a, a proponent for decades of memorizing scripture. And it just is so powerful when you have it memorized, the Holy Spirit can call it to your remembrance and give you the very thing that you need to say. And I long ago realized that my words um, aren't living and active. But if I quote the scripture, <laughs> God's going to do something because of that word going out uh, from my mouth to, to others. And so I really like that for that reason. And I have a lot of my family and friends uh, that that listen or read his devotional every day. And I think it's also special because when Steve and I start talking about it, he has a special gifting that God gave him that. And and I think that's just wonderful that he's sharing that every day. And I try and tell him that regularly. You know, Josh, for you, I, I see this um, opportunity with you being in a new position um, to really be intentional about the, uh, the things that are ahead of you and each and every day's interaction. Has there been anything that has come up for you um, since you've been in your new position where you're like, huh? I'm going to be challenged in that area today because I was paying attention to it. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is. Um, I, uh, so Steve can contest to this. In my, my previous position, in my other job, you know, I had uh, some senior guys that were there and they have a way of just kind of bringing the old ways around and the old culture. And for me, I'm, I'm very fast and innovative and they don't like change. So like, they immediately start pushing back on that change or what I have to do. It's the same thing here. It hasn't changed. So uh, I'm really praying to God about this time. And I know I'll be having a lot of discussions with Steve now about this, um, where it's, it's uh, that is extremely challenging. So God has me kind of saying some things and, and maybe doing some things when the opportunity comes to change the that perspective of what i see and but i'm gonna let the holy spirit really work in it and see what happens and uh I, i'm fearless at this point you know like uh, you know even before i didn't really i didn't you know i don't i care but i don't care at, at, at this way because i know god has my back and i know that um what, what if i do it in his name and even if i lose my job that's why i say fearless it, it's because he doesn't want me there and I don't need to be there if this is how it's going to be. You know, Josh, Josh has led Bible studies at his work. He has, uh, he's taught a course called, uh, every man, a warrior. So he, he already uses his presence in the workplace really, really well. Um, he's not mentioning any of that. He's mentioning the problems, but we all have people <laughs> around us that are like, you know, it's hard, hard to deal with. And that gives us opportunity because many of those people, they just do not know God. They, it, God is not on their radar. And uh, yeah, and he works in uh, the space um, industry where I used to work. And I know how those guys are very closed off to change, but it's still an awesome platform. And there's, and, and like he said, believe it or not, there's a lot that deny God. And I, I remember a quote by uh, Abraham Lincoln that says that you know, he can understand how you can look down on the earth and be an atheist. 
but he has no idea how man can look to the stars and say there's no God. Mm -hmm. and yet, in, the, in the aerospace world, they do. Right, and Abraham Lincoln didn't know what was behind those stars, just like I Abraham know. didn't know what was behind those stars. And now we know. I mean, the complexity is unbelievable. What I love is that you guys just really brought up, is probably a lot of people listening today going, but how do I start? How do I start my workplace mission field? What is the first step I do in order to make my work in my mind a mission field? And we've got this thing we call the I Work For Him Nation Covenant, which you go on our website, just look up the I Work For Him Nation. And it just starts five simple steps, but it starts with praying for the people that you work alongside by name every day. Just start praying for them. Don't tell them anything about Jesus, just pray for them. But then look for ways to serve them over and above what you are required to do with your job. Look for ways to befriend them outside of the workplace because real relationship builds outside of the workplace. But then look for ways to pray with people when you notice they're having a rough day. But all along, you've got to be a person of excellence. Everything you do needs to be defined by excellence in your job so that when you do those other things, they really make a difference. But it starts with praying for those people that you work alongside. You know, I, I love the fact, Steve, you've released do you have a whole year written now, 365 of these? Uh, I probably have more than that, but then I go back and watch them. I'm like, Ugh, I got to redo that. <laughs> so I keep taking them down and, and, and improving them, but I don't know how many are out there. But um, So we, we encourage everybody to go out to hiswordatwork.org and subscribe. But I was going to tell you that this week on our Power Thoughts, see, I work for Empower Thought, which you can subscribe on any podcast platform. Also see them on Facebook. Um, they're on radio stations across the country. Our One Minute Power Thoughts are featuring five of Steve's devotionals, where I just took the written part and took just 45 seconds of the most powerful words of it, and we read it for you and told everybody how to get to the whole devotional out there on the Power Thought, so uh, on our Power Thought and with a link to his word at work. So Steve, just want to let you know, trying to get the word out across the country uh, thank you, thank you. about what you guys are doing. Thank you. you know, and thank if you. any of the topics change, Josh, he might be targeting some of those to help you a little bit along the journey. That would be an extra yeah. benefit, right? <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. So it's great when we learn about how others are consuming content and some content, content makes a huge difference in our lives. And we love to hear from you guys, our listeners. Reach out to us on our Contact Us page. To let us know what God is doing in your workplace mission field. We love to hear from you. Iworkforhim.com. That's iwork, the number four, him.com forward slash contact. So, Steve, as Jim mentioned, we um, the title for this week of our show is Preparing Ourselves for wor Our Work. And so our blog this week focused on that very subject. And then we took parts of your um, devotionals and put those into our Power Thoughts for the week. So getting a whole opportunity to really focus on preparing ourselves for work. So what did you do to prepare you yourself and your heart for work? Well, you know, I, the Holy Spirit lately has been talking about, talking to me about really being a follower. I mean, it's one thing to, to be a believer, but it's a whole other thing to be a follower, right? And I just got back from, from Israel where they, this guy that lived out in the desert, who heard, still heard sheep and goats. And it just stuck with me. He said, you know, sheep are pretty easy to herd. Goats do what they want. The sheep will listen to the voice of the shepherd and follow. The goats just do what they want. And I don't want to be a goat. So I get up every morning and I say, Lord, let me follow you. Wherever you lead me, let my eyes be open. So I, so I start with a prayer that says, you know, I just want to follow you, Lord. So please don't let me run off in some crazy direction. And, and then you have to pick up the pieces for me. Mm -hmm. Let me. Let me follow. And then, um, and, then, and then basically I get into scripture and uh, try to get my mind wrapped around the word of God and, uh, and just try to keep my task-oriented mind people-oriented. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the people in the end that's going to count, you know, and, and, and the things we do for the kingdom. That's all that's going to be remembered in eternity. All that task list that ain't going to be remembered. No. Even if I do it great and, you know, it's not going to be remembered. So, so that's what I do. I kind of try to get my mind uh, wrapped around God's mission for me and me following. Josh, what about you? How, how do you prepare yourself daily besides listening to Steve's great devotionals at hiswordatwork.org? What else do you do? So I do quiet times in the morning um, about, about 
10, uh, 15, 20 minutes with God and stuff, go through the Bible and meditate on his word and stuff like that. And before I go into my workplace, I really, I pray for about two or three minutes asking him to really me to be a servant for him and to put someone in my path that I need to shine some light on. And, um, that's, that's really how I start. But like Steve, Steve hit it on the nose where very task oriented. And when you get in that mindset, it's really hard to pivot. It's extremely hard to pivot because you just go down the hole. Like you want to solve the problems, but then to be people oriented is, is a different mindset. And that's where I'm really trying with this new, this new, uh, chapter in my life that God has given me and my family to really, uh, to be more people oriented. Mm, that's a really good word. And Mike, finally, you give us a, a little peek into what you do to prepare for your work each and every day. Well, similarly, I, I have a quiet time. I think um, as I looked at the the outline before our meeting today, I was thinking of a verse that really in the last probably year and a half, and of course, I have a couple guys that are on a real estate team with me, um, all family members. I have a nephew and a son and now a grandson. And I love the, the, the concept of Psalm 32, 8, where it says, I will teach you in the way you should go and counsel you with my eye upon you. That's pretty comforting because much like uh, has been said so far, you know, some days we just don't really know what we're supposed to do with other people because we are task oriented. And when we can sense that he really is counseling us with his eye upon us, that, that kind of makes a little bit of a difference for me anyway. I'm thinking about it. I know you're watching me, Lord, so mm -hmm. help me not to step in my foot in my mouth or, or say the wrong thing and, uh, and be a servant. And I think that's a rare thing today, particularly in the workplace, is having a mentality and an attitude that I'm going to be, I'm going to figure out some way that I can serve this person and make their encounter with me uh, a difference maker. So that, that's been helpful for me a lot. Yeah, it's so important for us to recognize that our Savior was always busy, but he was never in a hurry. He never missed the people that were near him. And we need to we need to reproduce that all the time. I want to thank Steve with your devotionals. Thank you for Mike and Josh for sharing your stories today. Martha. You know, we have shared so many resources on today's um, episode, and I will have the links to all of those right in the show notes for everybody to make it super easy. But there's one more um, resource that I want to make you all familiar with. And, you know, with a donation of any size to I Work For Him, we will send you one of the copies of one of our books. We have I Work For Him, I Retire For Him, and She Works For Him. You can go to the um, iworkforhim.com forward slash donate. And when you send a check to that address or make a donation online, we would be happy to send you a copy of our book. You've been listening to I Work For Him with your host, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. We're Christ followers in our workplace. It's our mission field, but ultimately, I, I work, work for him. him. Did you know that God has a calling on your life? It's true. He's called you to bring Jesus to the world. For some, that may look like a pulpit or a foreign mission field, but for most of us, it looks like a construction site, a cubicle, a hospital, or a classroom. Wherever it is that you work, live, volunteer, and invest, that is your mission field. To learn more about integrating your faith into your work and retirement, check out our books. I work for him, she works for him, and I retire for him by going to iworkforhim.com slash bookstore. Thanks for listening to the I Work For Him podcast with your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. Please visit iworkforhim.com to learn more about connecting your faith and work, to join the I Work For Him nation, or subscribe to our weekly blog. You can also follow us on social media at I Work For Him to stay up to date and meet our guests. If today's message spoke to you, please subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast platform. Your review will launch more workplace missionaries across America. That's at I Work For Him and online at iworkforhim.com. I work, the number four, him.com. <laughs>